One of my absolute favorite magical tricks in the world of natural color is the interaction between tannins and iron or ferrous sulfate. And I love exploring all the different ways in which we can play with that interaction. Hi, this is Margaret Bird. Welcome to Color Quest. We have been looking over the past several weeks on different ways in which to use household goods, things you can find in your kitchen and beyond, to make prints on fiber. Last week, we started to explore how we could use iron to make prints on top of tannin. And today, I'd like to look at the opposite, how we can remove iron from tannin using citric acid, or in today's video, lemon juice. So let's continue our exploration of some of the incredible ways in which we can bring pattern and design to our fiber arts. So tannin is a term you have certainly heard here before on Color Quest, and you probably know that it is a naturally occurring substance that is found in all kinds of plant material. In the natural dyers world, tannins are used often as a binding material in order to help encourage colors to stick to cellulose fibers like cotton. That bond between cotton and natural colors can be tough. Tannin is a fantastic first step in order to bring that natural binding quality to fiber. And to that end, you will see tannin mordants in the forms of things like oak gall or gallo tannins, myrobalan, pomegranate skins, and terra, to name just a few. You can also grab tannins from things that are right in your kitchen, and tea is one of those. We have used tea here as the tannin base, and we're gonna do so today. Now for tea, you can choose to use any tea that you might have at your disposal. That can include black tea. Last week we worked with rooibos. You can look at green teas and even teas like yerba mate. So all of those can bring about a tannin coverage on your fiber and they'll also bring you some color. So since I used rooibos last week, and I love to repurpose, I'm going to use that same pot and just reheat it as an exhaust dye bath. I am looking here today to get a nice tannin coverage on my cotton napkin. If you are going to brew your tea from scratch, then just pick whatever tea you have available to you and heat that up so that it's a nice simmering pot of very strong tea. So let's get that started. And once the tea is heated and ready to receive, we'll talk about the fiber. All right, fiber, you know the drill. However, today I'm actually going to be weighing my fiber first. Knowing the dry weight of fiber that you're gonna be working with can be extremely useful in terms of knowing ratios that you might need for things like mordants, modifiers, and even dye sources themselves. I haven't been weighing my fiber yet during this printing process videos, but today I'm gonna to do that because I'm going to be using iron that I'm going to be measuring at a certain percentage of the weight. Now, ferrous sulfate powder is how I'm going to be making an iron bath for my fiber, and I'm going to want to use it up to 4% and not more. So 4% of the weight of fiber. So I'm gonna grab 
that weight now before I start the dyeing process anyway. So I just know approximately how much ferrous sulfate I'm going to need for my bath. Now you can use homemade iron water, which we've talked about in last week's video, as well as have a video on how to make that. It's gonna be a bit of guessing in terms of how many spoonfuls of that you might put into the bath, but just know that it doesn't have to be exact. We are simply looking for a nice iron bath that will allow us to have that beautiful interaction that happens. And we're going to be doing this on the whole fiber today. So let's get that fiber weight first. So my cotton napkin weighs 14 grams. If I'm going to be using approximately 4% of the weight of fiber for the iron powder, I'm going to need approximately half a gram. And translate it into a teaspoon that is going to be about an eighth of a teaspoon, which is what I use in a lot of my videos. You don't need much iron powder in order to make a great iron bath for soaking your fiber. Now, we've got that taken care of, so we need to prep our fiber. You know the drill. We need to wash it. And then we need to make sure that when we put it into the dye bath, it is wet. We always want to work with wet fiber. It allows for the oxygen to be removed from the fiber itself, which then invites the natural color to come in more easily. So you can either wash your fiber, and as soon as you finish that process, remove it damp and put it right into your dye pot, or like I've done, my fiber has been washed quite some time ago, I'm going to simply put it now into a bowl of water and let it sit for an hour while my dye is heating up. Then I'll have nice damp fiber to put into the tea itself. We're gonna let that fiber soak in that tea tannin bath for about an hour. I wanted to get a nice coverage, know that I've got tannins on all parts of the fiber. You're gonna to wanna to stir it from time to time, keep it moving through, and just making sure that you're getting really good coverage. Once that's done, I'm gonna rinse it and hang it to dry. We're gonna need it completely dry to set that tannin. We're then going to be making our iron or ferrous sulfate bath. We will get that ready so that we can put the tannin fiber into the iron bath. That will then allow us to work on the discharge step and that is going to be using lemon. So while the tea tannin dyed fiber is drying, let's make up our iron bath so that we can take that next step. If you are going to use your homemade iron water, fantastic. Put a tablespoon or two in a bowl that you use exclusively for iron or projects, and then fill it with water, enough so that you can accommodate your fiber and it can move around easily. For the iron powder that I'm going to be using, as you've heard me say many times, be sure to wear a mask when you're handling the powder in its powdered state. And wear gloves because it can be irritating to the skin. Once the powder has been dissolved in the warm water, you can remove your mask. Unless it's uncomfortable for you, the fumes are really non-existent but that is a personal choice. However, you do not want to be ingesting the powder and it does have a way of migrating into the air. You will also want to be cautious about any of the powder that touches anything that has tannin on it will create those dark spots. Now today, since we are going to be covering the entire fiber 
in an iron bath, I'm less worried about it, but know that it can very easily migrate onto other surfaces. So you just wanna keep your surfaces clean the best that you can from the powder itself. Now we only have to have our fiber in the iron bath for about 30 minutes. You will see that interaction happen pretty quickly, but we like to keep it in a bit longer in order to assure that we're getting it full coverage, just like we did with the tea tannin bath. Okay, my fiber has been sitting in the iron now for about 30 minutes. It has saddened, so the color itself is moving into sort of a grayish, realm but it's warm in its tonal quality i think what i'm going to do is place it back into the tea bath or the tannin bath just for a few minutes after i rinse it out now with water in order to just add a little bit more of that tannin to interact again with the iron now that's on the fiber and get it to the darkest color that this is going to be Remember, I am using tea that is an exhaust tea, so it's not going to be as strong as it would be if I were to start fresh. And of course, if I wanted even darker colors, I could always look to use some of the other tannin sources that I mentioned earlier, including Gallo Tannin or Terra. All of these tannins can result in a gray color, but we are enjoying some really lovely warmer tones in this shift with the iron. So let's rinse it out, put it back in the tannin bath, does not have to be heated again, and then we will let it dry so we can start printing. All right, our piece of fiber is now drying after its iron bath and it is a gorgeous color. I absolutely love the color of tannin and iron combined. It's such a great way to be able to darken colors in your palette. Now for printing, as you've seen over the past few weeks, I've been using a homemade printing pad. It's a super simple thing you can make you don't want to invest in something that's more expensive or as you saw in last week you can simply use painters tape to tape your fiber to your work surface now you want to do that because you don't want your fiber moving around and potentially putting printing marks in places that you didn't intend so let me quickly show you the printing pad that I made but in today's video I'm gonna go ahead and just tape it it worked really well last week when we used iron as the printing paste. So I'm hoping that today it will work equally as well as we use lemon as our discharge paste. Here is my printing pad. It is nothing more than some cosplay foam that was maybe a quarter inch. I cut some pieces to size, taped them together using just some duct tape, and then I put a piece of canvas over the top of it. I simply folded it and stapled it to it. Now, this piece is 30 by 30, which works well for me and my own art practice and what I do. And I have used it in several of these videos. So this is a very simple and inexpensive way for you to make a homemade printing pad. I'm also gonna want a blotting pad, and that is so that when I'm using my sponges that I'm gonna use, I can just make sure that I'm getting exactly the amount of the lemon discharge paste onto it. It's just a way to kind of control that. 
By doing that, I just took the same cosplay foam, put a piece of fiber over the top. This one I then put a piece of plastic so that when I put the blotting fiber that I'm going to use, which is just like an old cloth, over it, I can use it time and time again. Then I can remove this and just wipe this down. And then this piece of cloth can go into the laundry and be used again and again. So very simple process to make that. So what is a discharge technique? It's simply the process of removing color instead of adding color. Last week we added iron to a tannin surface to make the prints and today we're going to be removing the iron from the tannin surface in order to create a negative print. So we're going to be taking that beautiful color away from the surface of the fiber and getting an opposite polka dot print. Now lemon or citric acid is a natural material that can be used as a discharge. If you have ever squirted lemon juice on a piece of cloth that has color on it, you may have noticed that it has a bleaching effect. So we're really taking advantage of the power of citric acid in the lemon to break down the iron bond that has happened to the tannin fiber. So we are just going to use lemon juice. Now, the recipe I have used in the past actually calls for citric acid, which is a lot stronger. And I have citric acid crystals because I do use it in my dye practice. However, to make this nice and easy and accessible to everyone out there, we're gonna use lemon juice. I tested both and guess what? They both work. So if you have lemon juice at home or you simply have lemons, you can squeeze that juice out of those lemons and make your paste. So let's do that now. I have been referring to our substance as a paste through all or most of these printing videos, either a paint or a paste. And as you know, there are some natural thickeners that we can use to allow there to be the consistency more like a paste or at least thicker than water. In this instance, lemon juice is quite runny and therefore I am going to be adding gum tragacanth as my natural binder in order to make it thicker. Now, the reason that I'm going to do this is because I have a little bit more control in hopes that I can keep a somewhat round shape on the polka dot design I intend to make on the cotton. As you might imagine, a very watery substance is going to touch the fibers and then have the potential of bleeding into the fiber uncontrollably. You saw that in all of my videos, I've had some bleed happen, I don't mind, but if you're looking for some control, then you're going to probably wanna make a thicker paste. You can also use guar gum or gum arabic as options to thicken your discharge liquid AKA lemon juice.
All right, our print is finished and dried. One final step is we need to get the residual lemon and thickener off of the fiber. We can do this one of two ways. One is that we can simply put it into a nice warm water bath and gently scrub the areas where we print it. Another extra step you can take is putting it into what's known as a chalk bath. Chalk is calcium carbonate. You can find it at a specialty store for natural dyeing or online. You can also find it in your pharmacy because you might know it as something like Tums. You don't need much. You can just put a teaspoon into some warm water and then put your fiber in to gently rub the areas to remove any excess discharge paste. Now I have found that this step may dull your results slightly. So just be aware of that fact. For this particular project, I simply used warm water to remove that residual discharge paste. Citric acid or lemon can be tough on fibers as well as iron, so the chalking step could help alleviate any potential damage if you were to allow it to sit for long periods of time. But just make sure that you at least rinse it off. So what did you think of this particular process? I, again, really love the results. There are a few things you can do to make it more defined. One is that we were using exhaust tea and rooibos at that. And so our tannin content was quite low. So you can use one of the other tannin options to increase the percentage of tannin that's on your fiber. The other is you can choose to use citric acid. Citric acid is stronger than lemon juice, and so you may remove more of the iron and tannin if you use that instead of lemon juice. So you might be able to get a stronger difference between the discharge areas and the background color. I really love the subtle effect that this particular process created and I'm going to add that to the other four printed napkins that I've worked on with you over the last month or so and I'm happy with having such a beautiful set of cotton napkins all related and yet different in their own right thanks to the beautiful world of natural color. So next week on Color Quest, I'd like to take you back to a place that's near and dear to my heart, and that is the Color Farm. My friends Max and Amy are retiring from the farm, so I'm going to cherish the three kits that I still have left over from last year's harvest. We will look at each one of these kits over the next three weeks here on Color Quest and head back into the garden to see what some of these wonderful dye flowers and plants can do for us with wool yarn. So have a great week, and I cannot wait to see you back here at Color Quest soon. Tannin, the tannin iron color that has been that that is the ant the ugh, terrible